Good morning, everyone. I'm Vince Lancey, and in today's market rundown, we're going to look back at D Day for a second and look forward towards ECB Day as well as cover uh, the market moves yesterday. First, uh, let's take a look at the markets themselves. The dollar is up four at 104.33. Ten year yields are 430, up almost three basis points. The SP 500 is 53.54, essentially unchanged. The VIX is 1274, up a little bit. Gold is 23.61, up four dollars, almost five dollars. Uh, silver is 30.32, up 30 cents. Those two metals moved at 9 p.m. Eastern time and now have been giving back a little bit since then. Copper is 463, up three and a half cents. WTI is 75.02, up 50 cents, 65 basis points. Natural gas 263, up five cents. Bitcoin 71,000, almost perfectly unchanged. Ethereum 3850, down 16. Platinum and palladium are stronger. Uh, palladium is 939, up seven and change. Platinum is 1,002, up over a little over 11 bucks. Grains are all stronger. Soybeans are up 10. Corn is up almost seven. And wheat is up almost seven. At 1179, 438, and 662 approximately altogether. Okay, so D Day. Today is uh, D Day. So, your task, quoting General Eisenhower, will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well trained, well equipped, and battle hardened. He will fight savagely. I have full confidence in your courage, devotion to duty, and skill in battle. We will accept nothing less then full victory. Good luck. And let us all beseech the blessing of Almighty God upon this great and noble undertaking. General Eisenhower. D-Day. Okay. What do we have in store for today? Well, we have, we just discussed D-Day for a second there. We'll touch on that again. Um, we're going to talk about ECB Day, which is coincidental parallel there let's not try and make these things the same uh, but let's just say that it's about the interest rate decision in europe and we'll touch on something that michael every said to that effect and i have a little bit of an embridge update for you and premium as well front page precious metals primer which we showed you yesterday uh the crescat uh walkthrough and we had a little technical uh levels for copper as well Well, let's get to it. D-Day in Europe. On the June 6, 1944, 150,000 soldiers from the U.S., U.K., and Canada invaded Nazi-occupied France to begin the liberation of Europe. Today, EU elections occurring in which ideological control is at stake in the wake of multiple assassination attempts against conservative politicians is also going on. Restated. Europe is in the process of having elections that will influence other policy in Europe at the EU parliamentary level. And I think there's an ideological battle going on there. Moving on. I have an interview with Tom Luongo. We we had a conversation yesterday. And that'll be out in the next day or two, I'm not sure, on these very topics. And I think it was very interesting. It was certainly a lot of fun. I'm just giving you a heads up. That's going to be coming out. All right. Today is ECB decision day in which Europe will likely lower rates. Is that here? That's here. Today is ECB decision day in which Europe will likely lower rates in pursuit of lessening its debt payments, kickstarting its economy, and hoping the U.S. does the same very soon. Now, Michael Avery is uh, the global strategist at Rabobank, and he puts out notes uh, probably two a week on average, but he's been busy this week, and I think ECB Day has kept him busy. I'm going to quote uh, him, uh, beginning of his letter. We have the rest of it at the bottom. Your task will not be an easy one. Your enemy is well-trained and well-equipped and battle-hardened. And then he goes on to talk about uh, the Bank of Canada. The Bank of Canada became the first G7 central bank to cut rates in this cycle yesterday with a 25 basis point reduction from 5% to 4.75% on 
alongside a clear signal more will come. However, it is also aware that the fight against inflation may not yet have been won. Today, this is what Michael's referring to the ECB day. It's the turn of the ECB where a 25 basis point cut from four to 3.75 is the universal expectation. Some in Europe are lobbying for this to be followed up by a further move to three and a half percent as soon as next month. But where after that is a good question. He gets into the elaborate uh, uh, fiscal and monetary issues on that. It's very good. And uh, I think it's, it, it's, we need to give Europe its due because this is this is very important for the Fed now. All right. Uh, well, before we go to market news, let me just stay on this for a second. In my conversation with Tom, so this is kind of a preview, we discussed a couple things. And one was, one was that Europe is easing rates before the Fed does. And Europe, the ECB, and the U.S. Fed are not on the same page anymore. They may be on the same page. They're in the same book, but they're not on the same page. And the ECB seems to be, in addition to probably actually needing it, the ECB is actually kind of front-running the Fed with the hopes that the Fed will ease. And you can also see that in a chart that I don't have available here. Uh, Tom has it. Uh, the ECB has been buying U.S. bonds for the last year or so. And now it's affecting the bond market. To put it even in simpler terms, Europe needs rates lower more than we do. And they're lowering rates in the hopes that the U.S. also lowers rates. Because if we don't, their lowering rates doesn't really do much for them. Uh, as long as the dollar is the dominant currency over there. So there is an ideological battle. If you want to look at it in, on the home front, if you're looking at monetary policy that way, you've got Yellen and she wants easy money. And you've got Powell who's focused on inflation, at least right now. Now, there are arguments for both sides and there are arguments that I don't agree with for both sides, but here they are in a nutshell. We need to ease interest rates so that we can help our economy. And our cost of uh, our interest cost is really costing us a lot of money. Pal, we need to get inflation back to 2% because I screwed up before and I don't want to screw up again. And that's it. There's a lot of nuance in there, but that's how it works. Now, plug over to the ECB. Look at the ECB as an extension of Yellen. Okay. They have the same mindset. Easy money cures all of our problems. And Powell doesn't agree with that. And that's and that's where we are now. If the if the ECB eases now, you're going to have inflation in six months over there. So, but they're easing now because they expect the Fed to ease. Will the Fed ease? Who knows? But that's that's the key to that. In market, moving to market news, global investors are turning their backs on sustainably focused stock funds. Sustainably focused is the new way to describe ESG. They don't want to admit what it is anymore. NVIDIA is the second biggest company in the world now, which is, well, let's read this. With the maker of prized artificial intelligence ships becoming the third company ever to reach the milestone, the total puts the company just above Apple and behind only Microsoft. That's great. The second biggest company in the world that makes computer chips got gamma squeezed yesterday. That's not the sign of stability. I'm not telling you to get out of your lungs. I'm not telling you to get short. I'm telling you that if the whole market is on the back of NVIDIA and Apple, and Microsoft, and other companies don't participate, if this company falters, you're going to have a big problem. Um. Moving down to the uh, to the uh, data on deck, today's a jobless number, and tomorrow is the uh, the unemployment number. We also have included at the bottom uh, the rest of uh, Michael Avery's excellent write up for you all. Now, just to touch base on Embridge, Embridge, we've been writing on Embridge for two years, and uh, uh, meaningfully, and there are a ton of uh, reports on that. But let me just let me just give you the uh, the nutshell. Um, Embridge has been tested and is now launched and is public, all right? Four central banks in Asia 
decided they wanted to trade with each other, not using dollars, using gold and other assets as the traded collateral. They created a platform. That platform is called Embridge. Those are the four spokes off of the center of the platform. They invited the Bank of International Settlements to coordinate it. Now, why is the BIS invited? The BIS was invited because BIS has network connections. The BIS is at the hub of global money and gold is global money and the BIS is going to be involved. That also means that the West will be involved and Western banks will be involved, even if countries aren't involved. Here's some of the stories we wrote on it. There's plenty out there on it. You can read this, uh, but I think the paragraph that's going to, the MVP platform is enabled to undertake real value transactions subject to jurisdictional preparedness and is also compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine. This allows it to be test test a test bed for add-on technology solutions, new use cases, and interoperability with other platforms. Long story short, the hub of the bicycle wheel is solid. We're inviting other countries to connect with their own spokes, okay? And we have done trades on it with our four partners that will be goods for goods, using blockchain to verify, and uh, real value like gold, guaranteeing it. And you can best be assured that down the road, silver will be part of this. Anyway, looking at the charts before we go, I want to touch on silver for a second here. Uh, I, I've been cautious, but not bearish. I said below here, we go to this line, you know, and above here, we should go back up. Okay, so there you go. What I was hoping for was, and I didn't say too much about it, was we have a nice little finish here, and then uh, it rejects this area and goes up. Well, it's in the area. It went up. It's away from $30, which is fantastic. It's fantastic, but it's retracing it. Now, I'm, am I am I concerned about the downside? Much less concerned about the downside now that we're up here. This week will probably finish as a normal week, so a week of breathing. Uh, so it looks good. It looks good. Uh, gold, right? Gold looks even better short term, but uh, it has to catch up to silver now if you want to look at it that way. The other thing about gold I want to mention, I'm getting suspicious of this, and this is a big deal if I'm right. It's a, it's not a big deal if I'm, if I'm wrong ever. But if you remember over the last month or so, I've been talking about this area here, and this was a, this was a big buyer, a central bank or a sovereign fund, and every time it came, came down here, I saw the behavior that I needed to know that there was a buyer, and it started here, it retested it, bought it, bought it, bought it, bought it, bought it, and then just threw in the towel. Well. I was looking for it to get back to here, right? But it didn't, it stopped here. And this behavior, you can visually see what I'm talking about, is similar to this behavior. And also the, the, the data that I'm looking at show me that as well. Therefore, I think it's quite possible that this buyer is not finished and has actually raised his bid. That would be amazing. And the, uh, the open interest in the market, in gold especially, has come off very aggressively, giving us a sign that this market may be close to being done uh, on its sell-off on the downside, on the daily, on the weekly. You know, it may need to go lower, but I don't see it. On the monthly, it's still way overbought, but it's still going up. The trend line is holding. Anyway, if you're looking for that dip to buy, and as I'm sure all the bullion banks are looking for that dip to buy, you might not get it this time. Anyway, I'm Vince. Have a great day.